high ground. So uh, failed TP rotation in from uh, uh, IX Mike there, and uh, or the stand in, and uh, they will find a kill on push once again. So as you can see, Moon is caught up extremely well in this mid lane, and he's right there neck and neck on net worth with the DP, uh, who has. Uh, Eight more last hits than him at this point. Uh, Lip will look to zone out TC in the bot lane, but he's got ro uh, support it, uh, rotating in with Fluff and Whitebeard. They're actually going to look to go on mid, uh, knowing how poorly Ush is doing up against Moon Meander here. Uh, Fluff will put an aggressive uh, sentry ward, uh, and there will be a DC and a pause here. We will put an aggressive sentry ward down to block out the hard camp, so this double stack is the last stack that... Uh, Riser will be able to get in his jungle. There is only a single stack here. <sighs> Excuse me, but they will uh, stack that up presumably pretty soon. Uh, there is a ward here to block out this hard camp. So, that is a radiant ward. Maybe they dewarded, uh, but at the 10 minute mark, there was no spawn here, so. Not sure if uh, Z Freak was walking by the camp at the time, but seems to be blocked up. Um, that's pretty cool. Take a look at this. Ember spirit. Balance in all things. So we'll see if he looks to pick up uh, the general Battle Fury build here. It looks like he just activated a remnant or uh, actually finished the Sleight of Fist animation. So that's what that is. Uh, pretty damn cool. Uh, it's not a bad Ember spirit set either. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, just showed that on screen. Um, but he does have the same set I do, except with the nice hat, which is exactly what I'm looking for at this moment for my Ember. So, nice set by Moon. <laughs> A little bit offensive item name there. So, um, Ush not having the best time. He is 2 2 and 0 on this DP. And. Um, could certainly be doing better in that mid lane. Uh, could certainly use a li little bit more of support. They did rotate Fluff in one time to take him out, uh, but that was a failed attempt. TC does have his blink up, so he had uh, relative free farm in the spot lane. Uh, was involved in uh, quite a few skirmishes, but uh, in between then had good CS. He did pick up a couple kills despite his couple deaths and a couple assists, so uh, KA more than deaths at this point. Uh, Z Freak doing extremely well on the Skyrath. He rotated top for a kill, rotated mid for a kill, and has been getting quite a few of them bottom. So he is 5 1 and 5 on this Skyrath. Um, obviously, has been buying quite a bit of the uh, wards, smokes, uh, and some consumables. He only has 655 gold to his name. But he is level 7 already on the Skyrath Mage. And if we take a look, uh, that is the highest of the four supports. Uh, by far and this, his uh, teammate riser is right behind him so complexity looking really good at this point in the game in terms of net worth in terms of levels um we take a look at the uh, golden experience they have surmounted a 4,000 experience lead at this point in the game and a 1500 gold lead uh but tc does have his blink out um there is uh not much else on the side of uh Sna right now. They have the phase boots and a null talisman and a bottle uh, 10 minutes in on this mid DP. So those two deaths really costing her at this point. Uh, on the other side of the coin, there's almost a mech up in 900 gold for uh, this viper which is awesome for swindle. Uh, there is arcane boots and 1300 gold sitting on this tide hunter. Not sure if he'll finish up a bracer uh, before going blink but presumably he will rush the blink at this point. Uh, we already touched on the Skyrath. 500 gold sitting in the inventory of uh, um, Moon Meander so hopefully he goes for the phase boots uh, pretty soon. He has a bracer and uh, poor man shield already up. So. Uh, nothing too exciting aside from TC's Blink Dagger, and uh, before this mech comes out on Swindle, he surely should make use of it. Uh, they have not used the... Uh, well, they did use the Primal Split one time, uh, bottom lane, but uh, they ended up losing that engagement quite heavily, so... <laughs> so, Moon Meander joking about the uh, some of the TAC pauses uh, the community has accused UG of using... Um, <laughs> uh, so we'll see. <laughs> I 
what ends up happening here. So not much else to speak of at this point, as I said, uh, 4,000 experience lead, uh, 1,500 net worth lead almost 2k at this point for complexity gaming so they're looking good um, I noted at the start of the day they had a good chance to go 2-0 in this uh, quasi round robin we have uh, game next is going to be um, SNA versus UG and then SNA again versus K-Stars so we'll get to see uh, we'll get to see a lot uh, of SNA today so A little bit of uh, jawing going on about uh, Union Gaming's pausings today, so looks like uh, Bush's power has has gone out, um, and uh, hopefully he'll be back soon and uh, have a fresh start from those two pickoffs in mid. Uh, one solo kill to the Ember and one to the Ember and Skywrath. Moon Meander and Z Freak, excuse me. Had me waking up early for a Dota 2 Canada Cup today. So. Uh, I am actually on the East Coast, so not very early. <laughs> we started the games at 2.30. I'm in Toronto, so uh, your resident ladies and gentlemen. I am not your DJ. I'm your resident Dota 2 Canadian caster. More rage, please, Dota. Please hit the follow button and flame me in Twitch chat. Appreciate it all. Uh, all publicity is good publicity. So uh, tell me how I'm doing at uh, MRP underscore Dota on Twitter or uh, flame me in Twitch chat. Send me a PM. Uh, add me on Steam. No, I'm just kidding. Don't add me on Steam because I stink. You guys can flame my uh, personal MMR at this point. There it is. More rage, please. I'm bad. Dota. Um, yeah, my solo MMR. 3664 at this point. I'm on a four game winning streak, so road to 4k uh, is in check here, but uh, don't look particularly good. My Doom's pretty cool, though. Alright, right, not bad. I'll hop back into the game here. Uh, so it looks like maybe Ush has reconnected, and he has, but uh, Limp is AFK at this point. Having a tinkle, I assume. So, I could, um, if you guys would fancy that, I like commentate in British or English, 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 and uh, not this uh, North American bullshit. But uh, I figure we've got like other casters to do that. We haven't got too many uh, English casters. I don't know how the scene is in Britain, but we've got a lot of Australian. Uh, on the scene we've got gods, uh, Toby one, etc, uh, etc, et so um, I'll go back to English, our English, uh, despite my Canadian accent, so resume does happen, Radiant's Swindle may, uh, or sorry, uh, TC may find Riser here, Dyer's but I'm not sure if he's willing attack. to dive this tower, he does have the split, uh, and they do have vision, so perhaps Dyer's they look to find a pick off and push attack. mid, they are grouping up as five here, uh, Moon does not look too uh, antsy to get in, and Riser is actually rotating Dyer's towards the top. They will commit the exorcism here. Uh, there is four levels in Witchcraft, so the tip 3041 build on Ush. Uh, very smart build. Uh, does get the exorcism up to full strength as quickly as possible. Uh, the arrow does fly and will whiff uh, on Meander, but they will pick up uh, this tower with ease and disperse uh, to make a defense on their towers. There is only the one TP on Ush. So they do have to walk and rotate uh, to these towers. Um, with the Nether Toxin, uh, Swindle putting in quite a bit of damage. He only has two levels up in Nether Toxin, but um, still putting quite a bit of damage into this tower. He has support from uh, Riser as well as Moon behind him, so he may look to bait out Ush here. Uh, there is the three-spirit bomb uh, with a sleight of fist. Bolas does miss, and they will 
uh, disengaged. So unfortunate for Moon that he bounced over to the range attack. creep uh, as he was popping the searing chains. Uh, the arrow will fly, but it's going to whiff uh, from fluff and stuff. So um, the sperm will not find an egg. He's got that crazy looking kind of arrow there. So we'll see. There is a slight of his bolas that lands onto way too, but uh, the Sand King Riser is not close enough to follow up on that one. That would have been a dead Wraith King, and he's only level 5. Um, top we'll see. Uh, looks like Moon's going to TP back uh, to heal, but leave a remnant here uh, in order to push this tower. Uh, however, Nyx did back off, so he doesn't necessarily need to be here to push down this T1. Uh, they will not find anyone in the jungle, and they will look to trade this T2 bottom with the plate words from Ix Mike coming up uh, fairly quickly and in bunches. Uh, they will not look to push the T2 top, and there are uh, three TPs uh, on Z Freak, Swindle, and Riser uh, up on Complexity. So we'll see if they look to defend this. They don't mass TP, and they'll Radiant's trade this down and not get much for it, but some farm Radiant's in the Radiant Jungle. So uh, we'll see if Ush walks into them and they find a free gift, but it doesn't seem to be the case at this point. Uh, they will posture up towards this T2 top. Uh, Ush will look to. Uh, um, blast out this creep wave with some crypt swarms. Uh, she is 4041 build. Uh, they will probably find her with a concussive shot here. There's a blink in from the tide. Uh, gush Mystic Flare, and that's an easy kill uh, with the Searing Chains used uh, from Meander. So, uh, TP from not sure who it was at that point exactly, but definitely cancelled. Uh, may have been uh, fluff and stuff. There will be. TP's mid um, from. So they will try to trade in two places in the map, uh, TC and uh, IX Mike pushing down this bottom tower. Uh, this tower will fall uh, for Nyx on the safe lane pretty quickly, and you will have Limp TPing bottom with Ravage available. And the epicenter channel from Riser jumps in with a Burrow Strike and the Ravage on two, and they'll get TC. Oh, just as he's about to slip. Unbelievable timing. Uh, he'll bring down Riser with ease, cycling up the. Uh, Actually, Riser uses the Sandstorm to get away, but a few right clicks from the Wind Panda and the Immolation will bring him down. Uh, as soon as TC comes out, though, in this Earth Panda, uh, he is going to die. And there he is with one health and a gush from uh, Limp to finish him off. So they'll get a one for one bottom, a Sand King for a Brewmaster. IX Mike will walk away um, and TP home uh, to this top lane. But Ush does get a uh, kill on the Viper. So uh, in the map, uh, a win for Nyx the map as a whole because they do get the core viper uh, they don't get the t2 bottom so maybe i'll retract my statement there if we include that the t2 was dropped by complexity but they still get a core and a support for a core uh, they do get the primal split used uh, tc did buy out his treads before dying so he's sitting on 500 gold uh, at this point uh, he'll buy a couple tps and a salve uh, and the net worth is Oh, wow, Ush gets blown up by uh, Ancient Seal, Mystic Flare combo by a solo Skyrath. Uh, sorry for missing that one, guys. Uh, but very, very, very good game for Z Freak so far on the Skyrath. He's sitting on 1400 gold at 3200 net worth above uh, all the supports except the Sand King, who's expected to be high with his ability to farm stacks here. And Sand King's got his blink up, uh, but. Uh, Sneaky Nyx Assassins will look to go into the Roche Pit and find that. They do have the mech up on their Vino, the Arcane Boots, the Phase. Uh, Yules is on the way for Ush, but is really uh, nowhere near here yet. They will not have the Exorcism for this Roche, so it's a little slow. But they do have the Medallion up uh, on Fluff and stuff, so they do bring it down with relative ease, uh, especially with the play Wards. They lose a little bit of health, but Ush will pick up the Aegis, so hopefully he'll be surviving for the next six minutes or so. Uh, until he gets his Yule Scepter up uh, and hits that uh, mid-game window. So 15 minutes, only phase, um, Staff of Wizardry, no Talisman, not the best. But uh, Moon is not terribly ahead of that. Uh, there is nothing on the Courier or in the base for him. So uh, Moon not doing terribly well either. He does have his Drums phase up, which is uh, pretty good for this point in the game. Uh, there's a Wraith Fire Blast thrown on uh, Creep here thought I might miss something. There is a rotation from Moon and uh, 
Z Freak into the jungle, and if they find out either one of these heroes, uh, they will probably get a kill with the Searing Chains into Mystic Flare combo. But they do not. Uh, he will throw a uh, Scouting Spirit onto this high ground here uh, to check for a ward. Uh, they actually don't put a sentry down, so not exactly sure why Moon did that. He might might have thought that there was one. Uh, there's an arrow that flies and actually hits Z Freak from the mid lane. That's a five second stun and quite a nuke, but uh, they won't be the, able to get there in time. So very nice arrow from uh, Fluff and stuff. Um, but they, they are not able to follow up on it. Moon's still hanging around. He puts a defensive spirit down. He's going to get Yules up and he will probably get out before getting silenced. He will. Um, the cast animation on uh, on uh, the fire remnant is a lot quicker than on the DP silence, that's for sure. So, Osh has a haste rune uh, popped. He does have his ools up finally, so he's uh, even without this haste uh, running at 5.03 uh, move speed with the phase boots active. So, really quick on him. Um, looks like Swindle will look to push down this bottom lane while there's distraction elsewhere on the map. Uh, there will be a TP back from uh, TC, and he does have a Primal Split available. He does have a Point Booster to his name as well, so looking to go into that early Ags. Uh, Riser may find uh, IX Mike here, but does not with the vision from uh, Sneaky Nick's Assassin spotting him out. Uh, IX Mike will turn, or MJW, I should say. I'm still calling him IX Mike. Uh, you will not stop me. Uh, there may be an engagement here top. The Tide is going to find Fluff and Stuff. He'll jump in Ravage and the Mystic Flare will clean up uh, both Fluff and Stuff and the Ultimate from way too. Uh, we'll see if they look to chase this. There are two Spirits up on Moon Meander. Will he look to dive the tower? He will not. Uh, but they w they may look to posture up and take this mid tower, uh, which is uh, a reasonable objective to look at. Uh, there is a couple bottle charges expended from Moon onto Z Freak and he will pick up this double damage rune. And we'll see what he looks to go do with it. He may look to just farm out uh, the jungle. They do have a sentry down here for the Sneaky Dick's assassin, so Dyer's they will deward this uh, as soon as they can. Uh, but they'll push up and look to take this mid. There is no ravage, but there is a blink burrow and an epicenter, so they see this TP in from uh, IX Mike. There is a moonlight shadow though and an instant mech charge. Uh, Wraith fire blast will hit as well as an arrow, but no, he remnants out. In just in the nick of time and actually a little bit of a slowed uh, animation there from the Wraithfire Blast. He will hit a uh, Slide of Fist Searing Chains combo on us. She will defensively use herself um, and looks like Moon looks to re-engage. Uh, he's got a Slide of Fist that's hitting with a double damage. But, uh, he'll get Duncan Hazed up, blink in from uh, TC. There will be a Concussive Shot Mystic Flare combo that whiffs onto the DP. She'll pop her Exorcism and they'll chase down Z Freak. Uh, while the rest of Complexity backs off, uh, they do cancel his TP. I think he canceled that TP on his own. Uh, there are no stuns here. Uh, maybe the Marana in very close range uh, hit a point blank arrow. That's probably what canceled Z Freak's TP there. But uh, they only find a Skywrath for the commitment uh, of an Exorcism. However, Ravage was committed uh, recently, but they do manage to defend up uh, the bottom tower with this exorcism, so not a complete waste, and definitely one that saved Usha's life uh, had Complexity Gaming dispersing uh, after being cast. Uh, Limp will look to find out Waytu here, but there'll be a blink away from TC, and uh, Waytu will uh, hide in the tree line to get away here. Uh, the Venomancer is farming up some ancient stacks with some plague wards, so a nice influx of money will come his way. Dyer's and they do finally clean up the uh, the creeps for the Radiant side, do clean up the mid tier one for the Sneaky Nyx Assassins. Uh, Way2 is sitting in the trees, but he does Dyer's not have a blink, so it's uh, still going to be very difficult for him to initiate. Um, and on a lot of complexity gaming is hanging back. He can throw a Wraithfire Blast onto Riser there if he has vision of him, but uh, there will not be much follow-up. Riser does have his Blink Dagger, so he's trying to stay back. Uh, Arrow will fly, but it's not going to hit anyone. 
and uh, Slagafish from Moonmander will continue to clear up the creep wave. Uh, he doesn't have two, he does have three bottle charges, so uh, he's good enough in terms of regen. Uh, there's a Crip Swarm out and a single silence pop from Gush onto uh, Swindle. He'll get Gush back, but uh, he has a haste room, so not too worried about that. Uh, Skywrath Z Freak will do some uh, dewarding up in the jungle and. Uh, Ush will look to chase him down with this haste. Uh, he still has does have quite a duration on this haste, and he will definitely find him with the Yule Scepter uh, here. Oh, he, he jukes the wrong way, though. Ush uh, missing out on a potential kill there. He didn't have uh, too many people backing him up, so I'm not sure if he would have picked the Skyrath off there. May have had to commit an exorcism for it. Nonetheless, he misses Z Freak on his way out of the jungle. And uh, Viper... Um, Proceeds to top, uh, Sw Swindle proceeds to top Ush on the net worth chart. So he has a mech up, Wraith Band, Aquila, Treads, and looks like he's building into a BKB here. Um, he doesn't have anything in the stash. Uh, but Moonmander finds a solo kill on Fluff and stuff, and they'll commit uh, the Wraith Fire Blast plus the, uh, plus the uh, Primal Split, uh, keep him silenced up, and uh, he, he presumably used all his spirits to bomb up uh, Fluff and stuff there. Um, so he will go down. Not a good trade for uh, Complexity at all. Losing a support Marana uh, for a core Ember Spirit is certainly favorable. The this Marana is already on the bottom of the me. net worth chart. So certainly hasn't worked out uh, so well, this support combo from uh, the Sneaky Nix Assassins. And it does not help that uh, their top three net worth Holders are not heroes that scale very well into the late game. Uh, DP can get pretty scary uh, at the around the 40 minute mark with uh, perhaps a heart uh, as well as a bloodstone, but uh, they will trade off lane towers here. Ush will clean up uh, the top tower with her ex exorcism and uh, three heroes from complexity will clean up. But uh, there is a concussive shot, Ancient Seal, Mystic Flare onto IX Mega. Gush will hit him too. He'll get the mech charge off, but a burrow strike from Riser will clean him up on the side. So uh, smart play from Z Freak to rotate around and look for uh, heroes waiting to uh, defend the tower and it looks like complexity will go back to defend their t2 uh, with a couple heroes here there is a blink burrow onto and a, a spirit bomb from uh, moonmeander plus the ravage and they'll clean up uh, tc as well as the wraith king ultimate pretty quickly they'll force uh, fluff to back and the moonlight shadow will use used to cover the retreat but in the meantime uh, Z Freak and Swindle picked up uh, uh, the T2 offlane tower from the Nyx assassin so uh, good job by uh, complexity to get things done everywhere on the map save their T2 it's just uh, into deny range so they can deny that up uh, when the time comes and they also get the T2 offlane tower from Nyx Assassins as well as TPing back and picking off a couple kills on their way out. Uh, they did lose Riser in that engagement, so it was only uh, a two for one. Uh, but actually, it was a, a one for one, and they cleaned up the just the Wraith King ultimate, which is still uh, granted a large, very large cooldown at level one, uh, around three minutes, over three minutes, actually four minutes, four and a half. So. Uh, huge cooldown at level 1 for the Wraith King, so they will they know that Reincarnation will be down for quite a while, uh, being as he is only level 9. Uh, Viper, again, uh, top of the net worth. Uh, is It did actually end up uh, opting for the Aghanim Scepter build as opposed to the BKB here. Not too worried about the Primal Split, seeing as how he's sitting on 1700 health and uh, the damage from the Death Prophet ultimate is physical so uh, opting for the agonims instead of the bkb i thought he might bkb just because he had an ogre club first as opposed to a point booster but he does pick up the bkb uh, moon does have his perseverance and 2100 gold to his name there is almost an agonims out on uh, the venomancer for complexity he's about 400 gold from his eggs but not sure how much an agonims level 2 poison nova will do in this fight for them there's a lot of it definitely does help against the ember spirit uh, he's not able to throw a spirit out as quickly as the if uh, for those of you who are new uh, to this hero the, the spirits actually move at the same pace as the ember so if the ember is slowed and he tries to throw out a spirit uh, to escape the the spirit will be just as slow as he is at that point so 
Uh, the Poison Nova will definitely help versus the Ember's ability to escape, but if they get off a of Ravage in these fights, uh, I mean, I don't see them really losing. I don't I don't feel that the Primal Split is super strong versus a lineup that has a tanky hero like a Tidehunter, a, a escapable hero like an Ember Spirit, a tanky hero like a, a Viper uh, with a mech charge for the entire team. So, uh, looks like uh, Nyx is really on the back foot here. We'll take a look at the, the net worth graph, and it's a 5,000 lead. Uh, for complexity as well as a 5,000 experience lead so they're looking strong uh, looking like they're in a, a good position to go 2-0 today um, they look uh, for me at least uh, they look a lot more poised and sharp uh, early on in this game than they did versus Union I felt like uh, despite the 12,000 gold lead from Union they still felt like they were in the game for most of it and uh, Complexity did let a few things happen on the map uh, in Union's favor. I feel like they've choked out uh, Sna quite a bit more than they did to Union Game. There is a smoke from the trees from uh, the Sneaky Nix Assassin. There will be a blink in claps and uh, Primal Split and the Exorcism committed. Uh, Mystic Flare goes out on way too though and drops him quick. The Ravage will not will only hit Fluff and stuff in the back lines, and the Poison Nova will go off and hit Moon Meander, but he already had some defensive spirits out, so he will make it out. A Crypt Swarm with some eating from the uh, Exorcism will clean up uh, the Skywrath as well as the Viper, and the Epicenter will come in late and not be enough to kill up uh, <laughs> Ush from the, on the DP, so a little bit late uh, from Riser, and it's a 5 for 2 in favor of the Nyx Assassin. They'll go straight into the Roche Pit. So, uh, excellent initiation in there from TC. Uh, immediate back off uh, from Swindle, despite having a mech charge, as well as uh, the Aghanim's Viper Strike to throw. He looked to turn around, and uh, from there, they were picked apart slowly. Uh, there, there was way too uh, picked off on the side here, but the Ember took a lot of damage in uh, the face of three heroes at the side of the fight. So, excellent play from uh, Nyx there. They're going to eat into this advantage, uh, and you can see the dip from that one engagement. 2,500 gold, uh, and after this Roshan, will be about a 1,500 gold lead uh, for, for the uh, complexity gaming. Uh, as, as compared to the 5,000 gold lead that they just had. Uh, we'll see when the graphs update with the Roshan kill and uh, what the story is. But a uh, significant chunk of Complexity's lead was cut into there. We'll see if uh, any items begin to come out uh, for it. There is a There is a Viper Strike here that goes out onto Ush, but she disjoints it with a leap and uh, will be fine. Uh, Swindle will take a look into the pit for no apparent reason. Uh, and uh, D Drunken Haze will be dropped onto the Ember. There is a Viper Strike that goes on onto TC. His split is up, however, and he will use it. And they will Yules up Swindle and hit him with an arrow. And this will be an easy pickoff. They will pop the Exorcism again. He will get forced back by his teammate. But even through the mech charge, the Exorcism and the Immolation a little too much. Uh, Burrow Strike into IX Mike after popping the Poison Nova, but they will chase down Riser here with a Starfall. He will only get hit with one uh, Starfall. He will try to deny himself to Creeps, but the Exorcism will clean him up, and the Arrow will hit on Moon Meander, and they will pick him up as well. And this game, uh, we've got a game on our hands, folks. This is unbelievable. Nyx with a huge comeback. Two big engagements for them. So, we'll see what they look to do. The Exorcism is down. They can't push right down the mid, but they will Death Ball right now, knowing that the, the uh, Death Timers are pretty long. And we'll take a look at the buyback status uh, for Complexity Gaming, there's no buyback on the Tide in terms of gold. There's a cooldown uh, our gold for uh, the Viper and the Ember and the Skyrath is uh, is insufficient at this point. So the Tide and the Viper may be able to buy back soon, but not at this point. And the net worth swing is gigantic in uh, Sna's favor. All Complexity had to do at this point in the game was uh, starve them out on the map. Uh, avoid fights and take this to the late game where uh, heroes like the Venomancer fall off hard. Uh, Brew will fall off as well, not quite as hard as the Veno would, but uh, they've let they've let Snaw right back into this game, and your rares are safe if you bet on the favorite. Look at this dip uh, after the Roshan and the engagement. There's a 5,000 experience lead in favor of Nyx and a 2,500 net worth lead. So really 
uh, throwing away their advantage here. Hate to use that word, but the throws are real uh, for complexity here. Moon has just not uh, really recovered so well from that early start. He did get a couple kills uh, afterwards on the DP, but uh, died once in the jungle for a solo kill on Fluff and Stuff, and he's got a Battle Fury uh, and Drums phase up at 31 minutes, so uh, nothing to shake a stick at, certainly, but nothing to write home about uh, for the Commander. He's going to go and try and farm up uh, some of the dire jungle uh, with his bottle chargers and his battle fury hopefully look for some stacks uh, as uh, fluff farms up the radiant jungle and um, riser farms up the dire jungle as well so uh, they will see uh, moon farming up this uh, siege creep top he will put a defensive spirit out but uh, they'll try to get a yules and a silence onto him uh, shiva's from ush is off the mark because he anticipated moon to go into the trees whereas he was still below the tree line so um, bit of mind games there by moon I'm not sure if that was totally intentional but nonetheless had a defensive spirit knew he would be uh, encroached upon uh, sooner or later sitting that deep in the lane but there is a blink clap primal split onto melons in the mid he will get forced back by uh, his teammate um, riser I assume was the one forcing him back. It was actually the Tidehunter, but they will pop an Exorcism and a Boulder Smash to get him. And the Ravage will be committed, but it will hit on three. There's just no follow-up. There does come in the Epicenter after another Ravage, and they will clean up Fluff and Ush in this engagement. But the Wraithfire Blast and a couple crits from TC. One crit and Burrow on two, and the Arcane Bolt spam, and the Blink out from uh, Riser will save his life here. They will pop the Aegis on TC, but a couple mortal strikes and the Blade Flurry into uh, Z Freak will not be enough, and TC will smartly blink out despite having the uh, Wraith, uh, Wraith King ultimate here. Riser will blink back in and stop the TP, and the Wraithfire Blast will uh, be thrown on a creep before uh, the Wraith King dies there. So a three for one mid. The committal was very high on that Viper. They used up the split. Uh, the Ravage came in and only hit uh, a couple Broodlings as well as the Wraith, uh, Ush and the, the Marana. Did not hit the Wraith King, uh, if I recall correctly. Uh, so it was kind of underwhelming, but the Refresher, freshly out on the Tide, uh, was able to get two Ravages off and uh, they brought down uh, Ush as well as Fluff early and left TC uh, and Way2 out to hang their mid. So. Uh, excellent play from uh, Lil there mid, uh, knowing his capability with the Refresher. He commits both Ravages there, uh, so it doesn't allow them to get any map objectives off it. But it does save Riser, uh, and it does uh, grab them uh, a little bit of experience and a gold influx. So, there's a, a BKB up, uh, 10 second BKB up on uh, IX Mike now, so uh, he'll look to be uh, more involved in these fights with his mech charge. Uh, Force Staff is up on Riser. Uh, with a blink as well as arcane uh, boots uh, 2600 gold in the in the inventory of moon meander and a rod of owie just came out on the skywrath after that engagement mid so looking good for, again for complexity they look to be uh contesting but uh, uh nix knows that their window is is slowly closing and that the time is now to go high ground uh, they've got their ultimates up uh, on everyone except for the Wraith King, who has a 55 second cooldown uh, until his next uh, reincarnation is available. But they need to go, and they need to go soon because their heroes are going to fall off late game. So they pop the Exorcism. Uh, the Viper Strike is disjointed by TC with a nice blink there, but his blink will be on cooldown to initiate. So we'll see if they, they look to go in off that. They do not. They will glyph up uh, here and throw out a sleight of fist, but. Um, Z Freak with a concussive shot from the high ground. Nyx will look to back off. Uh, and uh, Moonlight Shadow. Searing Chains will reveal IX Mike uh, shortly. Uh, but they will they will disengage here. Uh, I guess not confident enough uh, with TC's Blink Dagger being cancelled, with uh, uh, Wraith King's reincarnation still not up for another 8 seconds. So. Uh, they do get a good amount of chip damage. Uh, about half this T3 is down, but their Exorcism is down. Primal Split is still up, so uh, not sure that uh, Complexity is going to look too eager here. But again, as I said, um, 
they shouldn't really be looking eager in this game at all. They don't have uh, much of an advantage here. About a 2,500 experience lead. They do not even have a net worth lead. It's 2,500 in the favor of Nyx. And uh, there's really no ticking time clock uh, for them the as there is for Nyx. If, uh, if you ask me, they do have the Viper and the Ember Spirit to scale well into the late game. Morana uh, as well as Wraith King scale well, but they're just so uh, underfed and farmed at this point. Uh, that they're really irrelevant and uh, their impact on the late game is more or less negligible uh, from the outside looking in. Like there is only a blink and medallion on this Marana. Uh, there is only a, a blade mail and an ogre club treads on the Wraith King. Maybe he'll look to pick up a BKB soon or a Halberd. He's got 1500 gold sitting uh, in his uh, inventory. Halberd would be uh, pretty nice versus this lineup. You don't necessarily see embers go for uh, BKB so uh, he moon's gonna pick up a, a regeneration room here and uh, he's he's picked up his crystallis as well so veil of discord is gonna be picked up here by riser so that's awesome to add to their team fight gonna help out the mystic flare the ravage the epicenter the burrow strike uh, and and the rest of their toolkit uh, with the gush and uh, whatever else is used even the ticks out uh, from Viper Strike, I believe, are magical. So they are. Uh, so really nice pickup here uh, to add to the team fight from Riser. He's doing well, um, sitting above all the supports, uh, as you would expect a Sand King to, to do at this point is under uh, on the net worth chart. Nyx will look to go into Roche. Uh, they do have the Exorcism here. We'll see if they can hit it. Uh, they drop the Medallion. They drop the Medallion. Bluff. Bluff. Oh, Bluff is actually uh, in, scouting out in the jungle here, so I'm not so sure about that decision. They'd be, I think they'd be better off uh, using the medallion to bring down this Roche faster. He's at 25% health, but Fluff does scuttle and break the smoke, so they pop uh, the exorcism preemptively and to drop this Roche quick, and it looks like uh, Complexity are going to be wary of that and back off uh, quickly. Uh, Ush will get a Newell Scepter on Seafreak, and they will pick him off with an arrow and the cleanup from the Exorcism Spirits, but uh, the rest of Complexity was able to disengage, and he just bought his Rod of Owie, so uh, not losing much in terms of his item progression, um, and most of the key targets did get out. There is a Shiva's up on this Tide now, so a little less worried about uh, uh, the, the attack of the enemies and uh, Lunar Armor to help him out with the exorcism spirits so good pick up there from the tide he can blink in shiva's ravage refresh and shiva's ravage over again uh, moon meander is gonna get out here uh he'll tp in the nick of time there's no blink on on way too unfortunately um but he does have 2100 gold to his name so it will look to see if he goes a blink here and maybe keeps a casual ogre club uh, perhaps that experience right there will convince him that he needs the initiation uh, this Viper is ha not much in the way of item progression. He's had this Ags for about 10 minutes now, uh, easily. Uh, Treads, Aquila, Wraithband, Mechanism, Ags, and the Gem Holder. Uh, we'll see what he does with this 2800 gold. Perhaps he goes into a heart here. Uh, perhaps he builds a BKB to uh, not worry so much about the Primal Split uh, from the Master. So, pretty stagnant at this point. Uh, I think this favors complexity a sure a hell of a lot more than uh, Sneaky Nick's Assassin's End. I believe they realize that as they stomp up mid, uh, wanting to use their uh, Aegis and Cheese advantage. They do have a 10 second BKB up on TC, as well as uh, the new heart on Ush. So, Ush also has the Aegis. Uh, they look to pop his Exorcism and finish off this T3. Perhaps they'll look to finish it off before popping any big ults. Uh, but Whitebeard will take a lot of chip damage and almost die uh, to the... Uh, he will die to this... Uh, he will take out to this Viper Strike here and he won't even get a big slow uh, on anyone. So, yeah, that'll sound the retreat for Nyx Assassins. Uh, just a few Arcane Bolts, a Gush, uh, and some Sleight of Fists from Moon Meander were able to bring down Way Too, and that really hinders the ability uh, for Nyx to push in here. But they do have the Aegis, they do have Cheese, and they do have some brand new items. And uh, I, I, I think they know that their window is closing to end this game. Uh, there is an arrow that whiffs uh, both on Swindle and Moon barely. Uh, so well shot there by Fluff, but just not well enough. Uh, they will posture up here and drop a bunch of Plague Wards. Uh, 
for to keep the uh, creep wave in from uh, the complexity side, and they will choke them into their base for now. They will look to fight. There is a Viper Strike and an Exorcism popped here that goes out onto uh, Bush, but there is no initiation on her yet. There will be a slight of this Polos combo. The Ravage will hit none as TC pops his PKB, and as does Ush and MJW, two Ravages worth nothing, and that's the team fight of uh, Complexity gone right there. There's an instant buyback from Riser, but uh, not much he can do here. There, as the Primal Split is used afterwards by TC, he will bring down Swindle with a Boulder Toss, some Immolation, and uh, perhaps a more right click. So Swindle will actually get away with 175 HP, and the Mystic Flare will clean up uh, IX Mike and Ancient Seal. Ool's dodge, a nice Ool's dodge on that uh, Sleight of Fist by Ush. He will silence up Moon Meander and pop his Shivas, but he will get burrowed and hit by the Shivas by uh, Limp, and he will get brought down. This is just the Aegis here, but he's got no uh, support, so he will presumably go down again with no BKB charge and no TB. So. Um, despite BK being three heroes through two of the ravages from Limp there, Nyx ends up losing a lot in that fight. TC manages to survive, he doesn't use the cheese, he does use his primal split, uh, but all they ended up getting was a tier three and about 200 damage, uh, not even 155 damage on this range rack. So, two refreshers, or uh, two ravages used, refresher is down uh, for Limp, but uh, they can easily push in. Uh, with a Mystic Flare still up, uh, Epicenter is of course down, used in that fight, but up very soon uh, with a Veil of Discord to combat, uh, combo it with, and uh, some zoning Viper Strikes out from Swindle here. Uh, he's not much worried about it because he's got the Aghanims upgrade, and they're going to take an easy T3 here with Usha uh, not having buyback for 655 gold. So they'll take an easy tier 3, put a little bit of chip damage into the melee barracks, uh, jump in from Mike. He will use the Poison Nova plus a BKB that will pop three BKBs with the Slight of Fist almost bringing down Whitebeard here. The split is committed. They will find Swindle all by himself. Uh, but a concussive shot, Ancient Seal, and an Arcane Bolt with a Mystic Flare into Mike. Very nicely done by Z Freak on the backside. Uh, the Wind Panda will throw Tidehunter up into the air as Whitebeard respawns, but uh, he will go down to some right clicks from the Ember and the Tide. And Z Freak will presumably make it away uh, using the Rod of Owie as well as the Ancient Seal on TC. He will die to a Shiva's Guard uh, and uh, some right clicks from the Ember Spirit. Uh, Ush is back in the fight, but it seems that. Uh, Moon is going to be able to get out. He will drop a Sleight of Fist Bolas onto Ush, and everyone is able to disengage uh, for Nyx. Nyx uh, loses a lot here with a buyback from TC. They lose three, uh, only to the one uh, of... And Viper actually cleans up uh, fluff and stuff on the backside. I think the issue here is they continue to go for this Viper uh, early on in the engagements. Gets slowed up by the Corrosive Skin. He's far too tanky to bring down with the Treads, Mech, Eggs, and he's now got his Yasha up. So good, another engagement taken by Complexity. Uh, they get uh, a mid tower for free, uh, more or less, uh, in fact, for a gain, uh, and only losing the Tidehunter who did not have Ravage for that engagement. So uh, Complexity really looking like they're uh, on the strong foot uh, here and in the driver's seat. Tide will buy back, so they'll look to go immediately again with a Ravage Refresher up. So they've got two Ravages here. Uh, they know the buyback is down from TC. Uh, the buyback is is down from Ush as well, unless he farms up 450 gold before they get there. So there are no buybacks in this game except for the Ember Spirit. And that is the one hero that can immediately return to the battle uh, if he has uh, the... No, the wherewithal or the sense to leave down a spirit before he dies so he's only got one spirit hopefully he doesn't use it to dis uh, to re-engage he will drop it into the tree line here so moon meander will be set up uh, to return to this fight the zoning viper strike will go out onto way to as well as a sleight of fist and that'll already bring him to half health so uh, a lot of play word set up here middle uh, to deter the push from uh, complexity gaming, but they've got a new creep wave coming in suit. Uh, the arrow will land on Riser, uh, as uh, Fluff smartly knows Riser is uh, posturing up for an epicenter world strike with an epicenter channeled up. So, uh, well shot there. Uh, they are ready to defend this with an exorcism and a primal split, but. Uh, it hasn't seemed to be so effective. TC will jump in with the BKB. He will clap Primal Split, but they do go on the Viper again, and he 
he's mech'd up, and the Shivas and the Ravage will hit on two. Uh, a double Ravage will clean up IX Mike quickly, and uh, Wraith King soon to follow. They will finish off the Tide in the middle. Wraith King goes down, but he does uh, make an AoE slow on everyone. Riser will get cleaned up by the Exorcism Spirits and a Wraith Fire Blast and a Blink Clap just to ensure the kill there. Uh, they will lose uh, Viper as well as uh, Z Freak on the backlines, and Moon will be the only one to escape. So, uh, Nyx showing some life here. Very back and forth game, guys. Uh, we have here Ools will catch out Moon, uh, presumably. Uh, it does not. Very nice. Uh, sleight of Fist. Searing Chains combo from Moon Meander. His spirit's cooling down in two seconds. Uh, so he will get out uh, and TP uh, with time to spare. So they lose a lot there mid for complexity. Take a look at the uh, net worth graph and it is just all over the place, but more or less back to equilibrium at this point. Complexity still has an 8,000 gold lead, but uh, not sure that that will be enough at this point. Uh, there is no exorcism or primal split, so. We certainly will not see Nyx death balling down mid. Uh, although, perhaps if they had access to the buyback status that I did, uh, they would think about it. Uh, there's no buyback uh, on most of these heroes uh, for, in fact, all of these heroes except Ember for complexity games. So, we will jump into the Roche pit, uh, drop some plague wards, and uh, wait for Fluff and stuff to come with his uh, medallion. Uh, Roche will come with some support. Basically, only right clicks, uh, being as how her uh, exorcism is down. She does have 200 gold in her name. It looks like Bush will pick up uh, the Aegis here for uh, the Nyx Assassins. And perhaps they will look to push their advantage uh, when that is up. The Primal Split is now up. The zoning arrow goes out from uh, Fluff and stuff and does not manage to hit them. But they will bring down the. the uh, 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 here, the cheese will go to the DP, and and TC will actually pick up the Aegis here. So perhaps looking to jump in with his BKB, uh, do a bunch of right clicks, throw out a drunken haze, a couple claps, uh, and then primal split off death, um, depending on uh, how early he is brought down and if he is focused. Um, again, there, Nyx went in on the Viper, but uh, he was uh, he was uh, forced out and, and backed off and mecked up. And Tide uh, Limp jumped in with uh, Ravage and Shivas, uh, but unfortunately for him, there's a lot of BKBs up on Nyx, and uh, that's exactly what you do when you're facing up against a Tide. You buy BKBs. He only hit the Ravage on two and was uh, subsequently brought down very quickly, and so they were already down 5v4 in the fight. The Viper had backed off to a point where he had to uh, walk back into the fight, so Nyx did really well there mid. Um, uh, Swindle did end up picking off Fluff on the side, but uh, they lost a lot more than they gained. Uh, so, uh, well worth the defense there uh, from from Nyx. And uh, we'll see if there's any uh, new items out. There is this blink on uh, on uh, IX Mike here, so that's going to help with his initiation. Blink BKB in. Uh, looks like AC is being built for TC here. Uh, there is uh, a BKB up on... Um, we saw that actually in the last engagement. He was BKB, but the sleight of fist almost chunked him down still. So there is a BKB up uh, for this Wraith King. He's sitting on 1900 gold. Perhaps they look to farm up Blink Dagger on him before going into this next fight. Uh, uh, Ush does have his heart, as we mentioned before. He's got a BKB 8 second as well with the Shivas and his Boots of Travel. So uh, definitely uh, capable of defense at this point as well. Uh, nothing new for the Tide as he died there in that engagement. Uh, Moon does have his Daedalus and a Scotty at this point, so he's hitting uh, very hard, uh, sitting at second on the net worth chart. Uh, we still have this Veil of Discord. Looks like we're going to build into a uh, BKB for the second. But there will be an engagement. TC will walk up high ground and soak up a, a Viper Strike as well as uh, some harassment. Uh, knowing that he has the Aegis, he feels pretty good. Uh, they're going to jump in. There's going to be a Shiva's here. A Slide of Fist will clean up all of the creeps. Uh, and uh, zoning uh, Viper Strike will be thrown out onto way too, but the Exorcism and a few right clicks from TC will clean up this melee box and a jump in from the Tide and a Ravage on 5 and it will hit again, so without the preemptive BKBs pop there, the Ravage does a lot of work. Uh, TC is back up, however, with his Primal Split and the Cheese was used to heal up uh, Ush, so they've turned it around. Bring down Moonmeander quick as well as Riser, and Limp will fall to a Wraithfire Blast, a Crypt Storm, and a Star Storm. Uh, Swindle is in the middle of the fight uh, after being cycloned up. 
Uh, he will hit a, uh, catch a clap and a Wraith Fire Blast to the face, and an excellent fright from Nyx here, uh, baiting them in, not using any BKBs. Limp jumps in, gets two Ravages off on five heroes, but the Mech Charge and the Cheese bring up Hush. TC dies, comes back, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, with the Primal Split and the BKB ready, and he'll pick up his AC even uh, from the enemy fountain, and there are no buybacks uh, aside from, uh, there are no buybacks at all uh, on Complexity Gaming, and they will call the GG, so excellent resilience shown here uh, from Sneaky Nick's Assassins. What, what a game, they were definitely at a disadvantage at the point. Uh, Z Freak will look to blow up Bush at the end of the game, but uh, the heart will prove uh, too tanky. Uh, so very well played from both teams. Um, uh, really, uh, really strong showing from the Sneaky Nicks Assassins. They were down uh, at one point easily uh, 10k uh, in net worth and in uh, experience. So uh, good resilience from them. Uh, excellent play uh, knowing the boundaries there uh, of their health pools and uh, the use of the cheese as well as the Aegis in the mid-engagement at the end which decided uh, the game. So. Desolator <laughs> purchased by Ush at the uh, very end, uh, but good game from them. Uh, unfortunate for Complexity, they end up going one and one today uh, after having uh, a really good uh, start versus Union. Um, they look better, uh, as I said here in the early game, but just uh, tried to force the issue, I believe, too much when they knew that they were ahead and uh, into the team fight uh, of a Death Prophet and a Brewmaster. Uh, you're always going to have a difficult time, even with the Venomancer Ultimate, uh, with the Ags, uh, doing a lot of work uh, against their team and uh, having the extra life on one of their supports to not be blown up uh, right away. Really assisted uh, Nyx Assassins in uh, accomplishing their goals in this one. So kudos to them. Very well played match. Uh, I believe they do have their full squad. I'm going to have to look into that. I'm not sure if uh, MJW, but I think it is. And uh, I'll take a look for you guys for the next game. Uh, sne we do have Sneaky Nyx Assassins again. Uh, I believe they're playing up against Union. So awesome, awesome game uh, from both sides there. And uh, nice 50 minute game uh, unusual in this meta but thank you guys again for tuning in uh, we'll be back very soon uh, with the next game two long games today two more to go uh, i am your resident canadian dota 2 caster more rage please dota thank you for tuning in guys thank you for the support uh, flame me on twitch chat uh, check me out at at mrp underscore dota on twitter uh, appreciate it guys uh, be back soon
Welcome back, all my lovely viewers. This is Group C of the Dota 2 Canada Cup. I am your resident Canadian Dota 2 caster. More rage, please, Dota. You can find me on Twitter at MRP underscore Dota or on Twitch at the same handle. This is Game 3 today. Uh, we've had Union Gaming up against Complexity. Complexity versus SNA. Both uh, really good games to watch. Uh, we've have, we have a pause here from the admins. So uh, not sure if Sidoral having uh, trouble connecting in. Uh, but we are in the lobby. And uh, hopefully we don't have a remake here. But uh, excellent, excellent game. Uh, last. So it showed some real, uh, real grit and resilience from uh, SNA. Uh, able to... Uh, know their timing windows, get their items, uh, push their advantage when they needed to, and even uh, baited complexity into uh, using a lot of uh, big teamfight abilities uh, in the last Radiant push. Team uh, expended their cheese afterwards, expended their Aegis, uh, saved the primal split and the BKB charge on TC. Uh, did an excellent job uh, of taking that Dollar game in the end. Very banned. good a late game decision making Radiant from then so bad. unfortunate for complexity they'll finish one and one today but uh, still look pretty good and uh, look like they have about as good a shot as any to uh, take this tournament when it's all said and done I certainly expect to see them in the playoffs although they are in uh, certainly one of the tougher uh, groups in Dota 2 Canada one of the more stacked groups we've got Union Gaming, uh, K-Stars, SNA, Complexity uh, all in this group C so I think the only group that really uh, has the potential to uh, uh, contest them is uh, Group B with uh, Narvi, uh, the Thundercats, uh, and THD uh, in there as well as no ES. So we'll get uh, a Lycan ban out from the Dire side. Time. Uh, first ban Lycan from uh, Snow, so they really don't want to see Lycan. Uh, from Yuji. Uh, Yuji did play it on the Radiant side in the Radiant first game against pick. Complexity, so obviously uh, they have been watching and they've been doing their homework. Uh, so they deny the Peruvians, uh, the Lycan, as well as the Viper from the first two picks, and uh, Union Gaming will oh, deny no. them uh, the DP, the Skyrath, pick. and as well as the Brew, who they'll pick up first. Um, Obviously, seeing uh, TC playing a, a pretty damn Crazy. good game. Uh, didn't have the best time in lane, uh, but made a lot of good decisions. Uh, had a good item build, uh, a suitable item build to that game uh, last game and did very well. So uh, they'll pick up uh, uh, Sidoral's um, Brewmaster here, uh, generally the mid player for Union Gaming. And Razor will be picked Die up presumably to. for TC. Uh, Radiant team pick for uh, the Sneaky Nicks Assassins. Tidehunter will be picked up as well, so uh, they uh, liked what they saw in terms of that Ravage <laughs> in last game, and they'll pick up a big team fight ability. They'll pick up a stun, a gush uh, that'll be able to keep uh, Razor's static link target around for him to soak up a lot of damage and do uh, quite a bit of work with that Eye of the Storm. So two heroes that certainly couple Ten well together. Uh, they've already built up a tanky lineup here on the side of Sna, and Five we'll see what uh, Union Gaming respond with, uh, obviously uh, deep into thought after Reserve seeing uh, that opening combination from Sna. Uh, Sna have looked uh, pretty pretty solid. Uh, for what I saw from that last game, uh, they made good decisions together. Uh, didn't get picked off uh, too often. Uh, there was one time where Puck was picked off in the river by Moon Meander's Ember Spirit, but they immediately punished him for it and uh, made a better uh, the trade go in their favor. So, already eating uh, 40 seconds into the reserve time is Union Gaming here. So, uh, they really look intimidated by this uh, Razor Tide combo here. They will pick up the SS. So, going to add a little bit of team fight. Uh, team if he bad. does get hit by Ravage, however, uh, he'll probably die just in a follow-up anchor smash. Uh, Ravage did, uh, even at level 1, 200 damage. Uh, nuke plus uh, that uh, long-duration stun there. So, uh, they will have the Serpent Wards uh, able to push. Uh, so, he may do somewhat of an Aoi 2000 uh, side lane pushing roll uh, as the Brewmaster forces fights uh, when he gets his primal split up. But uh, they'll take out uh, the Nature's Prophet on the side of the Sneaky Nyx Assassin. So, Five denying up um, early fighter uh, in this meta, uh, split pusher, 
and help with the push uh, with the Shadow Shaman, with the Treant, uh, and the Wrath of Nature to clean up uh, Creep Waves. So they'll deny up the Marana. Uh, they'll deny up Fluff and Stuff's Marana here uh, for Union Gaming. Uh, they saw it used to uh, pretty good effect uh, last game. It definitely wasn't one of the uh, standout uh, heroes on the side of Sna, uh, but I don't believe that any of them really were. Uh, you could make an argument for TC's um, Brewmaster in that last game, but they just uh, convened well as a team. They made good decisions uh, as a unit and together, and uh, that's what won them that game. Uh, good fortitude as five uh, defending pushes and as well as executing them themselves. So uh, good, good all-around team Dyer play team from Sna. You can tell these are uh, players that certainly go uh, way back. So. Uh, they will ban out the silencer here uh, for Union Gaming, so uh, definitely banning out uh, something that uh, counters up the brew. Uh, can easily kill off a Shadow Shaman uh, with uh, a Last remaining. Word, a Curse of the Silent combo, and a few Glaives of Wisdom. Um, they, that time. leaves the Doom, though. That does leave the Doom uh, for Sneaky Nyx Assassin. They may want to run like an Eternal Envy style. Uh, or uh, even DK to some extent style Doom safe lane and uh, put the Razor mid on the TC and as well as uh, have IX Mike playing up the Tide Hunter uh, in the off lane. I did take a look at the rosters on the Dota 2 Canada website and a uh, full roster of Sneakiness Assassins was listed so I'm gonna call MJW IX Mike and I'm gonna call Whitebeard Way too. <laughs> so uh, they do have uh, Seems one stand in on uh, uh, UG, uh, Citadel, Ben Haas, Jericho, uh, and uh, Zinderals are all uh, names I recognize for UG. So we'll take a look here. Uh, they're eating quite a bit into the reserve time for this uh, fourth band uh, from SNA. We'll see what they end up doing with it. Um, just trying to remember the last player. For Union Gaming here. Um, oh right, the Angel actually, the offlaner. He's a, he's a, a very good Nature's Prophet player. Uh, seen him play quite a few, and I probably is really the player to watch uh, for yeah. UG. So unfortunate that they don't have him, uh, unless he is Darky, which I doubt. Um, it's unfortunate that they don't have him for this tournament, as he's. Uh, I've seen him quite, make quite a few uh, plays. And as I mentioned, they did leave the Doom Radiant for Sna. So, uh, immediate counter up to this Brewmaster. Uh, a much better uh, scaling hero than the Silencer, if you ask me. I'm actually personally a fan of uh, late game right click Doom with the Pack Leader Aura, um, Assault Cuirass. I'm not. Uh, I really do like the Utility Doom, uh, the Arcane Boots, or the Tranquils, uh, plus a blink into Shivas, uh, etc. Maybe the Ags. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm more of a fan than of the right-click Doom than most are in the scene. Five I think he scales uh, well, more well than uh, a lot of people anticipate. And uh, a lot of teams time. opt to go for uh, the War Stomp from the Centaur. So not a bad choice at all. Uh, just Doom doesn't have really the mana pool to sustain it. And that's often why you see this utility build. Uh, highlight a uh, mana boots as well as the Shiva's guard. So they'll pick up the Rubik though uh, on Union Gaming. So pretty su pretty strong support duo in terms of aggression. Not the strongest in terms of health pool or uh, survivability. There is the null field for the Rubik. So they'll have a pretty decent time up against this magic damage heavy lineup uh, of Razor, but certainly not early on where he'll be skilling one into uh, Telekinese generally and many into the Fade Bolt. So we'll see how he skill builds. Uh, for a union game, but there's an immediate pickup of the Shadow Demon for Sneaky Nick's Assassins. I'm pretty sure Static Link does uh, persist through the disruption, so good pickup for uh, pickoff potential with the Razor. Uh, they've already banned the Mirana out, so Five you won't see that roaming remaining. duo from Sneaky Nick's Assassins, but uh, Shadow, Dam uh, Shadow Demon Reserve certainly a good time. support offensively and defensively. Uh, one that increases the magic damage remaining. of the plasma field, the ravage, later on in the game, the level death, the doom, Five and uh, he's got remaining. the shadow poison to clear, wave clear a bit with the plasma field. Uh, they will pick up the bat, so uh, I hear that generally 
makes it this late uh, into the drafting phase is either picked up or banned by this point. So some nice initiation from Union Gaming. Certainly another Doom target for Doom. So when you do have a Doom on the other team, uh, it's often a good remaining. strategy to make uh, your lineup one that has very many remaining. appealing or ideal targets for the Doom so that uh, if he gets off the Doom on one of them, Reserve the other time. is able to still use uh, their full toolkit here. So uh, there is a good amount of counter initiation. Uh, it's a little questionable to pick up Ten a Bat Rider remaining. into a Shadow Demon um, with the instant disruption coming out on Radiant your teammate team uh, as he is lassoed. So uh, not a bad pick, but I don't think it's, it's one that's absolutely uh, a no-brainer, certainly, in this in this situation. So, we will be, we will see a Pugna ban uh, from Sneaky Nix Assassins. They don't want to be uh, pushed into remaining. heavily with the Shadow Shaman coupled up with Dyer the Pugna. They also Pete. banned out the Nature's Prophet and the Lycan earlier. So, looking to fight, uh, looking to dominate their lanes. Um, we'll see what the fifth support is. There's a Wraith King ban from Sneaky Nix Assassins, so they ban out Way 2's Wraith King support. Not sure that that was the best support in this game. Uh, I feel like uh, even Witch Doctor is pretty damn good uh, for Snicks, uh, Sneaky Nick's Assassins here uh, with the Ravage as well remaining. as the Death Ward and uh, even the Malefice and the Soul Catcher uh, combo remaining. up pretty well. They will pick up the Sand King, so a Soul Catcher with Burrow Strike almost King even better. Um, uh, combo we saw Complexity Gaming use, Sand King and the Tidehunter. Uh, a greedy support, one that can get into the jungle and accelerate his farm with the, the use of Sandstorm. So I uh, really like this lineup from uh, Sneaky Nick's Assassins. I feel like they're out drafting Union Gaming at this point. They have ways to deal with the Brewmaster. They have ways to deal with uh, the Bat Rider. And they have a hell of a lot uh, of team fight uh, potential. Remaining. A hell of a lot of Weaver. magic damage. And they'll pick up the Weaver. They'll round out. So Ben Haas's Weaver will play in this game. Uh, certainly escapable in the lanes but uh, I feel like that's a, a very underwhelming pick for Union Gaming and the reason being is that Weaver is one of these heroes that you need a core item up in in order to start uh, fighting in order to uh, be able to chase in order to be able to split push uh, effectively and without uh, too much worry so I uh, really don't like the Weaver pickup here from uh, Union Gaming I really like uh, Sneaky Nick's Assassin's odds here uh, with this draft. They'll put Ush uh, on the mi on the uh, one position uh, Doom. Uh, TC should be in the mid with Razor. Uh, IX Mike on Ten seconds the remaining. Uh, Tide Hunter. Uh, Way two on the Sand King and Fluff and Stuff Five will be remaining. on the Shadow Demon here. So uh, not a big fan of this Weaver. I feel like if uh, you know Static Link is good against Weaver, uh, it, it persists through Shikuchi. So I feel like if Sneaky Nick's Assassins are to force these fights uh, early and often, uh, as soon as they get up uh, their level 6s, that they should really roll uh, over Union Gaming here. So uh, Peruvians uh, have proved to me uh, on numerous occasions that they are some pretty damn good players. So not going to underestimate them here, but simply looking at the draft board, uh, regardless of who's playing this game, I really like uh, the chances for Nick's. Uh, so... Uh, take a look at the uh, odds while we're paused here. And uh, we see that uh, after beating Complexity, Snot is a 2-1 to one favorite uh, over uh, Yuji here. It's a 67 to 33% percent fav um, uh, in odds in uh, Nick's favor. So TC will go mid. Uh, he'll be pulled two tangles with a Wraith Ban. Uh, Nyx will go straight out to their lanes. Uh, looks like Tide's running down to drop a Rune Ward. Uh, again, beautiful little curly courier uh, purchased up there. Um, way too Sand King looks pretty damn sweet. Um, he's got a big nose, but not bad. Uh, he's built up for uh, the safe lane tri lane. Uh, Shadow Demon will go and make sure that uh, his lane is not blocked up, and he will see that. Darky has actually removed all the trees here and dropped down uh, a very effective observer ward without these trees here that sees this entire area. So a little bit of a cheeky play bottom. there. Uh, Fluff and stuff probably wondering where he should put this uh, sentry ward to find out uh, whatever 
Darkie has put down, but we will see if he looks to deward that. A lot of vision coming out here for uh, the Union Gaming. Um, there is a Dire Observer Ward placed here by uh, IX Mike on the Tide Hunter. So he went the boots first in lane games. and uh, skilled up. Nothing yet, but probably will skill up the Kraken shell. Uh, he's been telekinesed, but uh, there isn't enough follow up here with only the Shadow Shaman, so. Uh, Zinderals will waste a bit of mana and uh, go back to lane. Uh, he'll already regen it up by the time uh, it's used again. Uh, Rubik has some pretty awesome base intelligence. So uh, Fluff and Stuff will catch this out with a single Sentry Ward. So free 50 gold for him and a wasted investment uh, for Larky. So uh, makes it does make it kind of obvious uh, when he sees him breaking down all the trees that there will be an Observer Ward in that vicinity. Ash will pick up a Centaur uh, with his Devourer at level 1. With, so he'll have a war stomp there. Uh, we'll pick up the last is denies. Uh, we should probably see TC dominate this lane mid. Uh, Razor's a hero. He's pretty damn comfortable on. Uh, ben has will have an awesome time uh, sitting solo in this bot lane uh, versus this Tide Hunter. So, but Tide should get some XP as long as he knows that there are uh, heroes elsewhere on the map. Actually, uh, since the Drunken Haze has been. Uh, has been skilled up so early. It uh, looks like TC went for an early point into Unstable Current. Uh, Rubik can posture up on Mike here, but he'll see him from the high ground and he'll be fine. Uh, way too, with his Burrow Strike ready, uh, looking for this Bat Rider, but I don't think they'll find him either. I think both offlaners will have a pretty damn decent time uh, in this game. The Both sitting up at 0 and 0, but both are already level 2. Uh, IX Mike actually in a little bit better position in terms of experience than Darky is. Darky's going to look to pull this hard camp uh, to his creeps, but uh, Fluff and Stuff uh, waiting in the wings uh, to pick him up and embrace him in his arms with a nice disruption. A little bit of harass going out from uh, Ben House. He'll get hit with an anchor smash. Uh, so Ike's might going to have a good time if this is 1v1 um, without the supports. There's already a pull through happening from the Rubik. Uh, but Ix Mike gonna rotate over and find some experience here, and he'll actually pull the creeps away uh, so as to get uh, not to get the full wave denied. So nice play by him. Uh, way too, way too will pick up a regen rune, but he's already full, so uh, he'll just deny that from the brewmaster of Sidral mid. Uh, mid matchup is going. Uh, heavily in TC's favor. Uh, he's stealing some damage here from Cyril. Uh, he's sitting up at 13 and 4 against the 6 and 0 of the Brewmaster. So, a little bit of a passive laning stage. Uh, Drunken Haze has been skilled up to uh, thwart Razor's efforts in, uh, in terms of last hitting, but it really doesn't last long enough at level 1. And uh, he's got two levels in Static Link already and is winning the lane hev uh, hard. They're going to go in. Uh, Towards the tower on uh, IX Mike here, but he's extremely healthy. Still got two consumables up with the Kraken Shell uh, and uh, Anchor Smash. He's not taking too much harass. So, uh, pretty passive laning stage so far. They're going to zone uh, Darky out of lane. He did have boots first, so he was able to uh, get down the cliff. Uh, doesn't seem like there was a Burrow Strike committed there, maybe for perhaps just a few right clicks and a uh, um, Soul Catcher, maybe with a War Stomp from uh, Bush. So, Rush doing well in the lane. He's going to get his Devourer off. Uh, he'll get his uh, net worth going, and he's at the top uh, with Razor, as you would expect a safe lane Doom to be. I really am a fan of the safe lane Doom. Sidoro uh, will get a bottle careered into him. Uh, we'll see if he crows it back. He does. I'm not expecting rune control here. There is no vision, actually. Oh, there is barely vision for the rune here uh, for Union Gaming and uh, vision for the rune as well for Sneaky Nick's assassin. So, uh, Doom going to take a little bit of harass, uh, one Sticky Napalm and an auto attack, a couple stacks of Sneaky Boom, Sticky Napalm, but he'll still grab the last hit there, um, and he'll do just fine in this lane. Uh, actually, that was Batrider's last hit. But he'll do just fine in this lane up against the BR. Uh, so, we've got uh, Fluff and Stuff, as well as uh, way too double stacking, Getting their experience here, denying some creeps to uh, Darky, and TC doing extremely well in lane. Uh, he's 26 and 11 up against the 11 and 1 of the Brewmaster. Really, the only major win right now uh, in a lane. Uh, the 31 and 7 
of the Weaver, rivals the 29 and 8 of the Doom. Uh, the 10-0 of the Tidehunter rivals the 8-0 of the Batrider. Batrider's actually going to rotate into the jungle and sack the lane for a bit. He'll give it up to Jericho. Um, Jericho has not used his skill point yet, so he's going to be really safe here. Just try and soak up some XP. Uh, Rubik is level 3, so he's been pulling uh, and getting some effective farm in the jungle. But if we take a look at the hero levels, uh, Shadow Shaman is extremely behind at level 1. So they're going to rotate him into the offlane. Um, Doom is not quite 6, so he doesn't have to worry about getting Doom to chase down. But uh, if they come into the lane with uh, the two supports, they will definitely kill him off. Shadow Shaman is mid, so perhaps they're looking for a very long static link uh, on on Sidoril here. He's not quite 6, but he's close. Uh, TC does go in with the link, but he does not have the support of uh, Fluff and stuff there who ended up backing off. Uh, Mike will rotate uh, down into the uh, Radiant Jungle, perhaps looking to find the Batrider or just looking to find a pulling Rubik. Uh, he is almost level 6, uh, sitting up against the level 5 of the Batrider. So they are neck and neck, both about to hit 6. Uh, Bat will get it soon with the uh, next pull camp. Uh, Mike will get it soon as well with the next wave of creeps. So six does come up on the Bat Rider, uh, it, and it ought, like it does simultaneously on IX Mike. So Sidoral will pick up an Invis Rune um, Radiance Middle top. Tower is under attack. Uh, still not doing very well mid. Uh, he actually missed. Oh, he was waiting for his bottle on the courier, uh, and no attack from TC. Uh, not trying to deny that rune. Uh, with much vigor, so uh, IX Mike will return back to the Ancients and uh, look to farm them up with that level 3 Anchor Smash. Um, he will probably stack these fairly soon as well. Uh, we see IX Mike, or Sidoral, sorry, rotate up with his Invis Rune and Primal Split, newly acquired, uh, to the top. He is level 6. This Doom, Ush, is actually level 7, sitting in the trees, uh, so that Devour doing work for him. Uh, he's getting complete free farm in lanes, hadn't, hasn't had any supports present, really. Uh, Sidoral will find uh, his way to, but not sure if he'll be able to kill him uh, with the split. He can just go to the low ground, and uh, he'll Radiant's actually back off with his uh, invis uh, ability rune expiring. Not sure that they saw him, probably did not, uh, as it faded out. Uh, Jericho is in the lane uh, with Ush, and he doesn't have enough mana for a doom. I'm sure if he had enough for a Doom Scorch here, he would be going in. Static Link is on TC, but he's going to run into 3 man. He's going to get Telekinesis, Lasso, Thunderclap. The Primal Split is going to be uh, committed here, but the Defensive Disruption and the Ravage in from IX Mike going to hit on the Batrider. TC will still go down to the Immolation, and that's actually first blood to Sidoral. He'll chase down uh, Fluff and stuff on this. He'll throw a boulder, chase him down towards the tower, but uh, his primal split will be over. There's an anchor smash and a burrow strike uh, from IX Mike, but really not enough to chase him down. And uh, with the TPs in from uh, Zinderols, they will back out. Uh, so one for nil uh, with a primal split committed uh, mid. Uh, you saw what I was talking about in the defensive mechanism with uh, the lasso target uh, getting defensively disrupted. So that did keep TC up for a little while, but. Not enough to bring down the split because the Ravage uh, didn't hit on a couple of those units. So uh, Doom almost casted there. It was committed, and he will, uh, as like I mentioned, as soon as uh, his combo comes up with a Scorched Earth and a Doom, find an easy pickoff on the Shadow Shaman. And he's having a horrible time sitting at uh, level. He actually gained quite a few levels uh, sitting in the lane there. So he's ahead of both. Uh, he's recovered nicely ahead of both supports for Nyx Assassins. So. Uh, they will look to take this tower, tower uh, as Ben has looks to take the tower bottom. Ben has dominating the CS board at 66 and 18 Radiant's on the sweeper. He's got a ring of health, Akila Midas up. So the Midas maybe will uh, help him transition into that uh, core item I was talking about a little earlier. Uh, hopefully with TC's ult uh, not actually skilled yet, but when the, the uh, Eye of the Storm comes up, uh, they've got a level 4 plasma field as well as level 2 static link. So hopefully when that gets up, uh, they start forcing some fights, uh, jumping on the Batrider as opposed to vice versa with uh, a Tide Hunter or a Sand King Link. Uh, we'll check out the item progression. It looks like uh, Tide is going to build uh, into the Magic Wand here, so he's IX Mike quite far behind, looking to recover from the Ancients, but uh, right on pace at 9 minutes 
is this blink dagger from way too and that is a great timing for sand king coming out of the jungle they obviously did well in their safe lane uh, not being contested too much so tc with the one death he's still sitting at level eight just barely ahead of sidorol who just parked his level eight as well he's got his blink dagger up the bat rider's got his blink dagger dagger up so they're going to do uh, well in terms of the initiation front, and they may look to force fights just as well uh, as Nyx might. However, they don't really have their one position to come into fights early and uh, really cause a, a disruptive, uh, disruptive force or anything uh, too scary. Uh, ben has has Sakuchi and a couple of Geminate attacks, but uh, his Midas is up now. Uh, he does let Dyer's it cool down a bit there, but he'll grab the first creep, presumably, and he does do that. Uh, epicenter being channeled, a pearl strike on the two. Does he time lapse in time? He doesn't. He'll get ravaged in from Ajaxman. Beautiful play, and they'll get two here uh, after the clap from. Uh, well, the primal split kind of committed there uh, a little hastily, but uh, Darkie will come in later for absolutely no reason and not clean up anyone and waste his lasso, but he will not get cleaned up. Uh, as uh, Sidorol is, is still here with the primal split, and uh, they will they will wait around for him, who is a much higher priority kill than Darkie was. Uh, both of them having their blink daggers though aren't really worried too much about dying, but they don't get nothing. Uh, they lose two there. Really nice play by Ice Mike uh, to uh, overlap the ravage stun with that of um, the burrow strike from. From Fluff and stuff, oh, way too, I should say. So Radiant's they'll look to take this bottom tower with TC. Uh, he's level 9, sitting on his first level of Eye of the Storm finally. Uh, he's got the recipe for the mech, so he's about 200, 300 feet away from that mech. Uh, he'll hit Sidorol with a nice plasma field and won't be too worried about Sidorol, who does not have a primal split currently. Uh, Doom sitting on a Midas uh, at, and Drum's phase boots, so doing really well. Let's take a look at the net worth. He is dominating. Uh, not dominating, but he is leading by a couple over, a couple hundred over Ben has. So Ben has with total free farm, uh, but he did take that death, and uh, that's put him a little bit behind the Doom here, who has the Devour and the Midas, which is always an extremely potent economical combo. Um, so uh, fluff and stuff, extremely poor. Uh, maybe flying his boots out now. He's not. He's flying wards <laughs> and uh, a TP out. He does have uh, tranquils, so I don't know why those didn't show up. He may have dropped those for. A split second. Radiance middle tower um, is under attack. So he does have his his tranquils up, which is not bad, and uh, Radiant will uh, probably lose. Union Gaming will probably Radiance lose their uh, bottom tower here, attack. and there is no glyph to Dyer's defend, so it should be a free uh, last hit for TC uh, with only two creeps here. He does take the last hit, so Radiance a lot of gold for him. Has fallen. I'm not sure what he'll look to build into. He's got the mech up pretty soon. I believe he has the recipe yeah, in the courier, so he's got a headdress and mech on the way. Uh, we see uh, Union Gaming uh, looking Dyer's through top tower the dire jungle, attack. but they won't find any of the sneaky next assassins there as they're all looking for the Roshan. So uh, a lot of lot of tanky tankiness here. Uh, they don't have too much right click damage. Uh, there is no medallion for this team yet, so um, they will bring him down now. With a lot of right clicks, a few anger smashes. So, uh, uh, will drop. Uh, they'll sack this top tower for it. Sidoral looking for TP support, uh, as is Darky, but they're not going to get it because uh, Nyx is getting things done elsewhere on the map. They've already taken the T1 safe lane tower of Union Gaming, so they're not too worried about losing theirs. It's an even trade. They do pick up a Roshan. They are still. Uh, they are still down Radiance by one tower, tower is under in, in Tower Wars, but they're looking to take Radiance the mid now, which is extremely is unhealthy. And they've got way too Dyer's postured up in a beautiful position attack. to initiate uh, with a blink burrow strike on Radiance anyone who looks to uh, have a deny attempt here. But they do not. They may get a three man burrow strike if they walk down into this uh, brazenly. Uh, and it looks like Union Gaming. Oh, but way too thinks better of it with uh, Sidoral with his blink dagger. Probably able to dodge that. He is able to brawl strike one. Uh, they will get a soul catcher and a gush and a couple right clicks off. Uh, nice disruption onto Sidoral, but he'll pop his primal split and go chasing actually with only the three rulings and uh, no support here. I have the storm pop from TC uh, and they'll back off 
Sidoral, but he uses his Primal Split for nothing, so I'll take an Eye of the Storm for a Primal Split any day. We're talking about a 60 second cooldown as compared to an over 2 minute cooldown uh, for Sidoral. There's 2 minutes left on that. Uh, he will pick up his point booster on his way to rushing his ags after the blink. Uh, there is a blink on this Tide Hunter now. Medallion is uh, ready for fluff and stuff, and there's a mech on the TC as well as a regeneration rune. He'll pop it there and get a free plasma field on these creeps. Uh, they'll pop drums uh, on Ush. And there is a Tide Hunter. Uh, waiting in the wings. Oh, she's actually popped his drums bottom and got a doom off on uh, Ben Haas, who lets it tick out. Uh, time lapses away and uh, he'll make it to safety, but they get to go in mid because of that and they'll pick off the Rubik quickly. There's a blink away from uh, Sidoral, but he's demonic purged up. Uh, he's not, he, he's uh, quick enough to get away here, but they will put a lot of chip damage into this middle tower and uh, there is an epicenter ready to be channeled if they look to defend this. So. Uh, still a mech charge up, still an Aegis. Uh, Darky is looking to scout. He doesn't have his flying vision up yet, and it is nighttime, so he can't see up this hill. But he will now, and he will see uh, IX Mike, but he won't look to blink in on him. IX Mike will actually blink out, and they will do half damage uh, to this T2 in the mid. So, towers are even. Uh, net worth definitely uh, in Nyx's favor. They have a 7,500 net worth lead as well as a 7,500 experience lead. So methodically uh, gaining an advantage here, doing well uh, as five as they did in the first game, and uh, not, not getting picked off attack. too often. So discipline play here from the Knicks Assassins. Uh, they've got Yuchi choked out in this small area, and uh, like I said in the draft, my problem is this Weaver is just not ready to fight. He doesn't have a Lincolns. Uh, if he gets doomed up, uh, I'm not sure if there's detection Radiant's here middle tower um, has fallen. for the next Assassin. There is dust on uh, way too, so uh, if he gets dusted up, uh, he's got a time lap instantly. And uh, if they catch him with the Doom quick enough, or with a stun combo like they did bottom with the Ravage and the Burrow st Strike, He's out of the fight, and that's your that most farmed hero by far. Uh, the second net worth on Union Gaming is the Brewmaster at 5,000 net worth compared to the 8,200 of the Weaver. He's actually being surpassed at the moment by the Sand King 4 roll from Sneaky Nick's Assassin. So you can see the predicament that Union Gaming is in, and uh, they're not looking uh, to be really comfortable with their position at this point. They can have the Weaver go split, split push, but all the T1s are already down uh, for the next Assassins. He will go towards the mid lane to push it out. He does have a TP on him, Ben has does, but he does not have his Lincoln Sphere yet, and so he has 1100 gold, uh, so he's about uh, another thousand away from a Lincoln Sphere, which is just too much at this point. Double, uh, double pearl strike plus a plasma field and a ravage will easily clean up the two submarines. Uh, and they will look to take high ground here. There is a lasso still available as well as a primal split, but as I said before, this weaver is not ready to fight. And Ben Haas is not even considering TP back at this point. Uh, he's split pushing the mid T2 while losing uh, a hell of a lot of damage uh, on his T3 uh, bottom. So obviously, uh, that's they feel that that's the best trade they can get. Uh, but that's what I spoke about in the draft. Uh, as this Weaver last pick. There is a jump in clap, primal split, and a lasso onto push, but he's just too tanky to bring down at this point. Uh, and he gets the Doom off actually on Ben Haz, so uh, there goes all their damage for this team fight. Ash and uh, IX Mike will uh, back out, and TC will respawn from this Aegis here uh, with uh, a plasma field to finish off Jericho, but he doesn't. He'll just look to back out. Uh, Sidoral will get Pearl Striked, and he'll get brought down with a few right clicks, and so will Ben Haz. Uh, with a, actually he'll time lapse back and make it out before the plasma field kills him. But a double kill for TC, uh, a free T3, uh, and only losing the Tide Hunter uh, is a great trade for Sticky Nick's Assassins here. And they'll back out, content with their spoils, uh, and find a regen rune even to fill up the bottle of TC. He'll have an Agonim, Agonim Scepter now, gonna buy his point booster from the side shop, and still have buyback ready. So uh, the, the courier did die in the process and he will have to walk back to base to grab his eggs, but luckily enough, his items are in the stash. Uh, saw something come out there for the Tide Hunter. He does have a Force Staff now. There's a BKB on Ush, as we saw used in that fight, and he's looking towards the Shivas. He's already got the recipe and the plate mail, uh, and 500 gold to his name, so he'll look uh, to pick up the Mystic Staff in time. He does have the Phase Boots, Drums, 
Midas BKB. So Doom is really fat, sitting on the top of the net worth chart. Uh, and we'll see an immediate smoke from uh, three members of the Sneaky Nicks Assassins. There's no Ravage available here, but uh, an open with a Doom and a, de and a Demonic Purge, uh, it, it means uh, the certain death of any hero, uh, aside from the Weaver with the time lapse uh, on... Uh, UG and even the Weaver is probably destined to die uh, to that combo. He does have a Lincoln's now, so we see a 19-minute Lincoln's on Ben has uh, for having one death. That's not terrible. Uh, he's been he's been farming around the map. You usually want to see this 16-17 uh, minute Lincoln's on for free farm. So, uh, well, he does have a Midas as well, so not terrible at all. Um, but he's just you know now he becomes ready to fight after they have a lane of rocks exposed uh, and. Knicks have mounted a 7,500 gold uh, experience lead and a 14,000 net worth lead. So, really didn't like that last pickup uh, from UG. Uh, you can see why it hasn't really worked out much. Uh, so, I do know something about the game, I guess. <laughs> uh, Doom sitting on 1,400 gold with his recipe. Uh, he's 1,300 away from a Shiva's guard. There's 1,300 gold on this Tide Hunter, so we'll see what he looks to build next. Perhaps a pipe uh, for his team. Who knows? Uh, at this point. Uh, but they will posture up and look to force their advantage here and uh, take out this tier 2 bottom. They will rotate back the tide with a Ravage uh, for their bottom tower. And below, the epicenter will come in and destroy the Rubik with a Ravage. They'll kill Ben has too. Oh, he does get uh, his time lapse off. But there is a Sentry Ward down here. Actually, that's a Radiant Sentry Ward. It will pop the dust and get him as well as a Demonic Purge after uh, he's used his time lapse. But they do not find him looking in the trees. Uh, he makes a smart juke upwards, but they will clean up the Serpent Wards, defend their tower, as well as get a tier 2 bottom, and the Doom will go out uh, on Jericho, who will end up dying to this, and he will not get denied, and a BKB TP out from Bush uh, makes an excellent play. He's got enough for his Mystic Staff now, sending the Courier already uh, to the Secret Shop to grab that Mystic Staff, and he'll have his Shivas up at 21 minutes in. We've got a 14,000 net worth Doom with FaZe, BKB, Drums, Midas, and Shivas. So Ush is farmed as hell. Uh, I love this. I really do love this one position Doom, especially when he's left totally uncontested. Uh, it's not like your traditional uh, anti mage PL, uh, PA in the safe lane that you look at and say, we have to kill this thing. It's getting a free farm uh, void for that matter. Uh, this is just a Doom here, but uh, Devour Midas is, is one hell of a spell. And uh, it'll get you to the top of the net worth chart, and it'll get you there fast. Uh, so BKB gonna come out for TC here. Uh, he's already got a full Aghanims up with a Kila, Mech, and Bottle, and Phase Boots. And I mean, I don't, I don't mean to be uh, cynical, anticlimactic here, but this game is, in all likelihood, over. Uh, 1,800 gold up on Benaz, so he's really the only one of his teammates that's kept up with anyone. This point booster that was purchased at around uh, 15 minutes for. Uh, for Sidderall is the last item Dyer's he's picked up. So, under uh, Primal Splits really haven't been effective enough. Uh, there's been so much tank on the Nyx Assassin side with your one position is a Doom, your offlaner is a Tide, your mid is a Razor, uh, and your Shadow Demon has Defensive Disruption, your Sand King has uh, Sandstorm to destroy uh, attacks and whatnot. So really, really good lineup uh, against the Brew here. Uh, just an excellent draft from uh, Sneaky Nyx Assassins here. I'm not 100% sure who their drafter is. I'm sure Ix Mike is the captain of the team, so he may as well be the drafter, but I'm sure it's kind of a group effort in that sense, and uh, they did a damn good job, uh, even with their last pick, Sand King, here. Really like that. Uh, Way 2 is going to posture up and look to uh, drop an epicenter. Uh, if it seems like they know that uh, Ben Haas is bait here. They will pop his Lincolns and uh, immediately blink out, but they do find uh, Way 2 with the bugs and an immediate jump. And a lasso, so but they will look to get uh, the Rubik on the backside. Doom will be popped onto Darkie. He will. He has Firefly up, so he will still uh, walk into the trees. But Ush will just chase him down. He does have a level death, so they'll take him out. There is a TP out from Ben Has. So the story of the game is Ben Has will survive again. Ben Has will get more farm, and he will do nothing with it. So they take a two for one top. Um, they save their tower. They kill off the Bat Rider as well as the Rubik on the backside. And uh, they only lose Way to who ha already has his Blink and his Force Staff at uh, 20, 24 minutes into the game. So they're really not worried about losing him so much. Uh, and, uh, they 
looking in an excellent position to uh, close this game out. 20,000 gold lead, 50,000 experience lead, a hell of a lot more items. Uh, two forces and two blinks. Uh, a blink up on the Shadow Demon as well as the Medallion. We all saw how poor he was. He's now sitting at a 5,000 net worth, and they're using his Medallion to go in on this rush. DC will come in uh, and pop his Illusions for free instead of using them for scouting. Or he'll just sit them in the pit. I, don't, I never understand why people bring Illusions into the Roshan pit, but not that it matters. Uh, this game is really... Uh, for all intensive purposes, over. They will grab the Aegis, put it on TC, and immediately smoke to go do something. Uh, IX Mike, building into a Refresher, already has Oblivion Staff and a Perseverance, so this thing is coming out uh, real quick, and especially if he can get a solo kill on this Rubik. He may commit the Ravage here. Uh, we will see. He did steal the Gush, uh, but he's going to try and not commit this Ravage, and he won't do it. Uh, so, uh, patience from IX Mike. Um, they will jump in and Burrow Strike Jericho mid and clean him up with the Click Plasma Field. And the Demonic Purge was also committed there. Um, so. Uh, they'll look to push into the mid. There's no Serpent Wards up right now. There is a buyback on the Shadow Shadow Field. He'll be up quick enough that uh, he probably doesn't have to expend it. They will jump out and lasso TC. The Burrow Strike will miss on everyone. He'll get telekinesed up and brought down. The BKB is popped by TC with his eye of the storm, but he'll go down to a right click from the tower with the bugs up. And not sure why he popped the BKB before his Aegis popped. Not sure if he forgot that he had the Aegis there. Uh, these Brulings are the only thing around, so Ravage would be a pretty much a waste at this point. But the Shivas and the Doom onto Darky will probably end up bringing, taking him out. Uh, they will find Sidoral in the back line, so despite losing two supports, they can still push high ground uh, with their three cores here. A little bit of a misplay by TC uh, using his BKB uh, when he was at 40% health and he had an Aegis in his pocket. Uh, so they will back out here despite having a Ravage. Uh, there is a Refresher about to come up in about 100 gold. Uh, so they will wait for that, go in with two Ravages and uh, end the game presumably. They made Jericho commit the Serpent Wards here before they walked uphill. So those will be wasted and that's uh, about two minutes on the sidelines. So uh, Tranquil's come out for way too. Um, so he finally does upgrade from his brown boots. We'll see if Doom has any other items towards this AC. He does not. The Deso is up on Ben Has, so he's finally able to uh, really contribute to this team fight here. Um, hopefully he can proc a, a Doom on the Lincolns, although it doesn't seem like Ush has been uh, uh, lacking discipline in terms of using his Doom. All of the targets that have uh, been properly Doomed, so uh, Ben Has may get a few right clicks off, but uh, with the unstable current, with the doom, with the tide, and how tanky they are, uh, with the dis defensive disruption, as I mentioned before, and the sandstorm to disjoint things uh, for way too, it doesn't seem like Ben has is going to be super effective. And in fact, he's going to split push this top lane. He does have a TP, uh, and he will not look to TP to back as they take this melee rax for absolutely free. Uh, there is an Ags up on TC, so they will likely look to go mid uh, after this push and uh, get the tower there. They do blink down. Um, they have lost their T2 in their safe lane, and Ben has is looking like he's going to keep going, but he realizes Dyer's that top tower no one from Snot is still in their base and uh, will continue to back out. Uh, so smart decision from him. Uh, really uh, not a favorable trade, losing a lane of Rax for a tier 2 top, but... Uh, I'm sure Union Gaming feels like that. That's all that they could have managed at that point. They do have all their ultimates up now, so if they're going to make a defense, now is the time. Uh, but the wave will get cleared out. Ben has will TP back, so it looks like they're trying to get the jump here. But they will initiate on Jericho. He will go down without even dropping the wards. Uh, ben has will come in and use the swarm on Nyx Assassin, but uh, that'll be quickly cleaned up as well as the creep wave. Zinderels is way out of position. He'll get jumped up. Gosh, and the Aya Storm will clean him up. And that's a godlike streak for TC. And he's just looking good in this game. Uh, jump in, but a, a Ravage to go back onto Darky. And it'll hit Ben House as well. He'll time lapse out, but he'll get doomed and brought down uh, with the Demonic Purge to finish him off. A blink in, clap, primal split. Nice defensive disruption uh, by himself. The, the Ravage has been refreshed, so we'll see if he uses it again. They might actually just clean up the ruins here. There is another Ravage. It's going to hit on two. Uh, the Epicenter is going to clean up Darky, and Ben has is going to get right clicked down real fast, and that's the GG call. Uh, so excellent game here 
by Sneaky Nyx Assassins. They're 2-0 today, defeating Complexity and absolutely rolling over UG. Uh, something I called in the draft screen, so... Uh, don't want to knock the Peruvians too much for their play. It wasn't horrible, but uh, their draft certainly was relative to Sneaky Nick's Assassin's Draft and really like what they did with the uh, last few picks. The Shadow Demon counter up. Well, actually, the Shadow Demon came out before the Bat Rider, so last two picks from Union Gaming, a little bit questionable. Uh, Bat Rider into the Sand King, Tidehunter, Doom, uh, Shadow Demon, and the Razor, and uh, the uh, Weaver uh, into a team that really looked like they wanted to fight early. So TC got his six up. Uh, Ush got his 6 up. Ush had an unbelievable farm all game. Uh, IX Mike got his 6 up and they did exactly what they needed to do. They looked to fight, they got their blink daggers up, uh, they found their timing window and they just rolled uh, through uh, UG and uh, Ben has who was uh, doing well farming but just really not effective in the team fights and so uh, good 29 minute victory, very solid victory from Sneaky Nyx Assassins. Uh, something that's going to help their team morale and uh, they'll go into their last game uh, of the day against K-Stars with a lot of momentum here uh, beating out Complexity in a game that uh, Complexity you look to have in their hands and also uh, rolling over the